Okay, good morning. This is Suzanne Lynch. I'm here with Bridget Shea. I'm Bridget um, is a acupuncturist and she has written a new book. I have it right here. It's not actually released quite yet, but it's called Cultivating Your Microbiome, Ayurvedic and Chinese Practices for a Healthy Gut and a Clear Mind. And, um, you know, Bridget, I've known Bridget for years and years, right? Yeah. But boy, it's exciting because she's now an author and has, you know, even since we've met, has studied for years and years and become, you know, it's like you really have, I think in a very straightforward way, looked at the science and I like how readable your book is. And um, you can see behind Bridget, she has another book on Chinese medicine and Ayurveda. Mm -hmm. And so that's very um, informative too. And it's hard for me as a Western person to get an idea of how, like the viewpoint is very different in a way from my Western mind. So I have appreciated there's not that many good books that help translate those concepts. So um, that was really helpful for me to read Bridget too. So, um, so thanks for joining us this morning. Welcome. And we're just gonna we're just gonna share with us around the question. It's like how do I protect my health and the health of my family uh, this fall and this winter. Like, how do I do that? And we're faced, we're in the middle of a pandemic and we don't know how long that will go on. So I felt like that was an important question. Yes, it is. It's a very important question. And um, I'm glad that we're able to address it here today. So in touching on what you just brought up, the fact that there is this other book I have on Chinese medicine, Ayurveda, and, and the um, accessibility of those medicines and concepts for us as uh, people that didn't grow up in those traditions, yeah. it's important for us to, first, when thinking about keeping ourselves healthy, whether there's a pandemic or not, Right. Understand that we're actually a part of nature, not just that we're like a part of it, like we're this little thing that got plugged into it, but that we are it. Our bodies are an expression of nature. We are an expression of the natural world. We are the natural world. And so when we look at mind, body, spirit from an Ayurvedic or a Chinese medicine point of view or any Eastern medicine point of view, we are looking at a complete unit as an expression of the rest of nature. We are an extension of our environment. Mm -hmm. We are born from the earth and we are part of it. And mm -hmm. we interact with the atmosphere and we interact with the other beings around us, whether those are plants or people or animals. And we interact with the microbes that are in the air and in the food and in the soil that we expose ourselves to. So I would say that the number one thing that we can start to do as a culture is to start to embrace and embody this concept that we are nature. Okay. And so what does that mean? Well, when you think about nature and you think about the seasons and you think about just walking outside on a beautiful day like today, what does nature mean to you? Hmm. You know, for better or for worse, right? Because the pandemic is nature, the hurricane is nature, but <laughs> the, the hummingbird is nature and the flower is nature and a beautiful sunrise is nature. So we are all of that too. And what the Eastern medicine uh, teachings understand and, and lay as their foundation is that that aspect of us is what we need to focus on in order to <laughs> keep ourselves healthy. And as part of that, the microbiome or the microbes that we emit and that we absorb are a part of that nature. 
and um, knowing that our bodies are almost half human cells and human DNA, and then the other half is microbes and microbial DNA, that ch that's another thing that makes us change our mind about who and what we actually are wow. on this planet. And so those are things that need to be taken into account when we're thinking about how to keep ourselves healthy, especially in a pandemic. And one of the things okay. that I wanted to show is an illustration that's in the book that Deborah Neary did. And it's a really great kind of, it's, it's a serious illustration, but it's kind of like joking. It's the, the fool from the tarot deck just kind of wandering around aimlessly, sort of like Pigpen from the Charlie Brown cartoons. And he has all of this stuff, like oh, yeah. floating in the air around him. So this is a really important image that I think we all need to sear into our brains in one way, shape, or form. If you're thinking about your body, you need to think about the space around your body as well. You know, and we talk about that in feng shui. We talk about that in, um, you know, decluttering our homes, cleaning out the closet, that our environment is an extension of what's going on inside of us mentally and physically. And that image that I just showed you is a really like more of a literal expression of that. Or if you've ever done aura photography and you have all these beautiful colors around you, and you think about your body, including that aura, that you don't just yeah. end at this place you feel you can touch tangibly, but that you extend, then you can see how we have stuff coming off of us and stuff coming into us. And it's all kind of hovering around the outside of the body. And that's called the exposome, the aerobiome, depending upon which uh, aspect of it specifically you're referring to, there's basically this microbial dust cloud that surrounds us at all times. And so that brings me to my next point. The first point is we need to change our minds and look at the way we perceive ourselves differently as part of nature, as nature. And the second is a very basic principle from Chinese medicine especially pertaining to external pathogenic influences like the coronavirus. And that is the best thing that we can do to keep ourselves healthy this fall and winter is to avoid coming into contact with it. Right? So really common sense, but who's actually thinking like that, right? Um, not many people. It's like when, I first, when it first started coming out and I was doing all the research I needed to do to fully understand it, one of the doctors from China is like, and remember, not coming into contact with it is the best form of prevention. And it's like, duh, everybody's looking for an herb formula to take. Meanwhile, they're not even gonna leave their house. So it's just not coming into contact with it is the number one thing. And so, you know, most of us still are able to go out of the house. We're still like right now, especially while our numbers are low, we're going places and doing things. and so not coming into contact with it, of course, means not touching it. And if we touch anything that could be an exposed surface, we wash our hands, right? We know that. We wash our hands for 20 seconds because we need to break down the wall that protects the virus. And that's okay. what we do with the friction. And if you use hand sanitizer, it's not just like put it on, rub your hands, and then let it dry. It's also rub your hands for 20 seconds to break down that wall around the outside of the virus. Okay. Um, we don't know everything about the virus yet. I suspect that the dosage somebody gets of it affects potentially how sick they're going to get. So yeah. limiting your exposure and protecting yourself as best as you can so that you know that you've done everything you can. Mm -hmm. And you're not questioning because the other thing of, with this is the anxiety piece that's surrounding it. Right. And if stress tolerance is already low and you go out and you accidentally do something um, that may put you at risk without meaning to, you're going to be thinking about it for the next you know, few days or maybe even the next two weeks until you feel like you're out of that window. 
Yeah. So you want to make sure that you're that you're managing your stress well and that you're also keeping your life simple enough so that you're leaving enough room to give yourself the energy and the space to think through all the extra stuff you have to do during a day without having to rush through it so that you don't make mistakes. Mm -hmm. So you don't walk out of the house without your mask or whatever it is. Uh, and speaking of masks, so um, what I would recommend is that, and I recommend to everybody, and I do this myself, is I have a mask every single time I leave the house. And I have extra ones in my car, and I don't have extra used ones in my car. I would recommend that you think about your mask as your second pair of underpants, all right? <laughs> So your body secretes 70% of your toxins through your breath. And it's getting that, that, those toxins, some of them are getting trapped in the mask. That's why you can smell, you know, what you ate two hours ago when you, you wear a mask sometimes. Whatever metabolism things are happening inside your body, 70% of the gases that come out as waste come out through your mouth and your nose. So you want to have a clean mask as often as possible. So what I've been recommending that people do is that they, they try on all different, like just, just plan to spend 50 or 100 bucks and get masks from different places mm -hmm. and find the one that fits you best and that, and that feels the most comfortable for you. So if you have an old pair of underwear where the elastic is all you know, screwed up and it's not it's all baggy. Like we've had that experience. Like that's really uncomfortable and you're messing around with it all day. And then you don't want to be pulling it up when, you know, when you're walking down the street or whatever. So you, you want to find something that fits you well. Particulates, we hope, are going to stick more to the outside of the mask. So every time you're fudging with that mask, if, if you've got a lot of room inside of it and you're constantly having to put it up on your nose, it doesn't fit you right. If you're talking and it's going, doo, 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 it doesn't fit you right. If you're talking and it's going, doo, 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 it doesn't fit you right. <laughs> you want to have, and so I have one right here. So I'm um, going to give a shout out to uh, Beth Mauser who dyed the Shibori fabric here and to Cheryl Clark who made this mask. And so this is, I think this one's a two ply. Three ply is really the best. So if you're going into a scenario where you're not gonna have the mask on for a really long time, this is, you know, barring being in a hospital or something, you wanna have a, a three ply mask. In the hospital, they have three ply or more. And if you're going into the grocery store, if you're going into a situation where there's gonna be other people that may not have their mask on or may not be wearing it properly, then you want to have a really good mask. If you're sitting in a doctor's office in the waiting room, for example, you want to have a good mask. You can get a KN95 or you can buy a natural fiber mask and you can buy inserts with carbon filters that go right inside of them. And so this one is just, this is a mask like I walk two miles a day and this is the mask, the kind of mask that I wear. And I leave it on most of the time. If I can't see anybody within like a half a mile, I'll, I'll take it down. But remember that microbial dust cloud, that's always around people. And some of those particulates are hanging in the air and that's what happens with coronavirus. And that's part of the reason why it's so contagious because somebody can run past you without a mask on. And that doesn't mean quick put your mask on, take your mask off. That means put your mask on and leave it on now because you don't know what that trail is that you're about to walk through behind them. Mm -hmm. You see the problem with this? This is why masks need to be worn. It's, it can't be this, um, you know, on and off, down right. and off. And I heard Dr. Fauci even say, I don't agree with everything he says, especially about herbal medicine, but um, he said that when he goes out for a run, which he does every day, and he sees someone within 50 yards he puts his mask on. That's not six oh, feet. Excellent. That's not six feet, right? That's 
totally different than what we're talking about with the CDC recommendations. Could I ask a quick question about masks? Yeah. That's fast, but sometimes in, even within the yoga world, I feel people say, I can't, I don't want to wear a mask because it causes illness. It, it, it's like, it's bad for me. I mean, can you address that? I don't believe that it is, but um, I've heard that. Well, I think that, um, you know, part of the problem, I think they're, they're, that masks can be triggering for people for a variety of reasons. Mm-hmm. And just like we need to change our mind about how we view ourselves, we need to change our mind about the masks. Yeah. And, and like, if you are skiing in frigid weather, tell me you're not going to wear something over your face. Right? right. Who, who's gone right. skiing and hasn't worn something over their face? And you forget about it after a while. It's like when you first, I remember when I first right. put my glasses, I could, I knew they were on my face all the time. Now I'll like, you know, go to bed with them on and be like, oh shoot, I still have my glasses. Like, and I get like that with the mask too. Like I'll walk in the house sometimes, it doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. And I'll just be walking around. I'll be like, oh, I didn't take my mask off, you know, because right. it, if okay. your hair fits properly and it's comfortable and it's not too thick and it's not like too pressed into your nose and your mouth, okay, it's not going to bother you that much unless right. there's some trauma around having this part of your face covered and then that's a whole other scenario. And in, the, in that instance, you may want to revisit how much you're actually go, venturing out into public okay. and what times okay. you venture because wearing a mask is a compassionate act for yourself and for and, and for, for others the community yeah. it's not like you know this is me and that's you and there's a boundary here it's more like i i am totally accepting of the fact that i want to protect you because i may be infected and not know it too and, mm-hmm. and you know and that's when you know you switch different sides of the street when you're walking down the street and all that stuff um, and so when you wear the mask, you should be putting it on so that you're not touching it, especially if you're taking it on and off, you want to use, you want to touch the elastic parts, right? And then if you need to adjust it, like I do with my glasses, I pull it up here. I wash my hands first before I put it on and then I tuck it and then that's it. And yes, yeah, sometimes my glasses fog up. Sometimes they don't. It just, just depends how it lands. And, and it's, it, this one's perfectly comfortable. I can feel it pressing a little bit on my nose, but everybody's nose is different. So they're all gonna fit differently. Sometimes you may need to tie a little knot in the elastic to make it a little bit more snug. The less space you have mm-hmm. around the outer edge of the mask, the more it, it clings on the outside edge okay. to your skin, the more protection you have. Okay, great. So the mask thing is really important. Then to take it off, I take it off like this. And then when I get in the house, I just toss it right in the laundry bin and or in the washing machine. And, um, and I have a ton of masks and we're doing laundry every day. Because not only is it about wearing a mask when you're out, but they teach you this when you go through training to work in any kind of medical facility. Your hair is like a, a magnet for pathogens. This is even prior to coronavirus happening. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to have your hair down and not have it covered and you're out all day, if you're in the office, if you're running around doing shopping, whatever it is, when you get home, clothes in the wash, body in the shower and wash your hair. And so what I've been doing is I'll, um, I'll sometimes shower in the morning, but every single day I go to work I shower at night when I get home I don't okay. hug my daughter or anything when I walk in the door I just take my clothes off and get right in the shower and wash my hair and I've done that every flu season since I started okay. in the clinic and I mean knock wood my experience of having a severe illness in the winter has has been pretty much nil um, mm. except for last year um since i started doing that and i have to do it religiously and i don't always feel like it i mean you don't want to work eight or ten hours and come home and get in the shower uh but it just becomes like a good habit to have yeah 
So, and, and so that, that all falls under the hand washing, the mask wearing, the chef. Okay. It all falls under that not coming into contact with the pathogen to begin with. So, you know, if you're ordering takeout, wipe it down. I personally have not been to a restaurant since this happened because I don't believe that that's an entirely safe environment. If anyone has not got their mask on and they're breathing or clearing their throat, they don't have to be sneezing and coughing. They're still emitting microbes. They still have a microbial dust cloud. I mean, you got to think about yourself as Pigpen from, from Charlie Brown with all the little bugs in the air around you. Lots of them are good. And, um, that's, and, and we want to be interacting with the environment, which, but many of them are also not good, especially given the time of year that we're headed into. So avoiding the pathogen and avoiding it as best as we can, right? So okay. those, are the, those are the most, I think, tangible, actual things we can do. And then um, making our bodies a less habitable environment for pathogenic influences to thrive. And this ties into the first point about seeing your body as a part of the natural world, as an expression of nature. Because we are completely immersed in microbial environment. It, the, there are microbes on our bodies, in every orifice, in, in all our organs and tissues, and especially in the GI tract. And these microorganisms are extremely important for our vitality. Without them, we could not survive. We couldn't survive as a sterile entity for probably more than 20 or 30 minutes on this planet. Wow. Right? Because we need those microbes because they are helping to regulate, first of all, our immune system. As, as a very young individual, even potentially in utero, our immune systems are being trained by the microbes, microbial entities that we're exposed to in the mother's womb is, is the new theory. So there's not a lot of, whole, of evidence for that yet, but there is some speculation that that's what's happening. And then once we are actually birthed on the way out, we're getting seeded with more microbes. And these microbes that we ingest, that we breathe in, these that we touch that are on our skin, they are helping to train our immune cells to recognize what is friend and what is foe, okay. what is us and what is not helpful for us. Uh -huh. And so without those beneficial microbes that are like the teachers for our immune system, our immune system can not be balanced. So a lot of times when we talk about boosting our immunity for the fall and the winter, people talk about it in terms of boosting. So we, what we don't want to do, we don't necessarily want to boost it. And anyone who's worked clinically with people with autoimmune conditions or allergies knows that you don't want to give another shot to the immune system because it's already amped up. What you want to do is balance the immune response. You want to make your immune response more intelligent. And so the pervading, uh, here's another reason we need to change our minds. Our, uh, the pervading system of thought up until recently was this hygiene hypothesis. And that is that we need to be exposed to pathogens in order to train our immune systems and so that we can be healthy. So this is a lot of the... Um, this is a lot of the argument behind, you know, all this hand washing we're doing and mask wearing and all of this is that we're not exposing ourselves enough to pathogens. But what scientists are now leaning toward is more of a beneficial microbe exposure okay. theory. And that is that it's not necessarily that our immune system needs to be hammered with a bunch of pathogenic entities. What it is, is that we need enough beneficial microbes to train our immune system to do the right thing at the right time. Oh. And so one of the ways we can do that, and this is what I'm recommending for everyone to do right now and to do throughout the winter, is to get outside. Because okay. especially if you can get outside and be around trees, around, around nature somehow, because the trees, the plants, the shrubs, 
they are all emitting chemicals and microbes that help us thrive. We breathe those in. There's a lung microbiome and part of it is fed by what we're breathing in. So if we're indoors all the time, even if we have great purified air, we're indoors with a, with a finite mix of microbes. Even though we're purifying the air, there are still molds and funguses and viruses and bacteria in our homes. Um, and that's fine. There should be some. And that's part of what feng shui is. Feng shui is explaining how the microbes, how the vitality flows through your house. And if it's flowing, mm -hmm. and if it gets stuck somewhere, and then when they're stuck, there can be an overgrowth, right? So, so all of these concepts from the East that we previously may have viewed as esoteric or um, otherworldly are actually quite at their, at their most uh, material manifestation, quite material and quite tangible. And it boils down to the microbial diversity in one's body and in one's environment. So one of the ways that we can boost our beneficial microbes is to be outside. So if you're already dreading winter, get yourself a, a pair of those Yak Tracks or whatever brand you resonate with that has the spikes on the bottom so you can put them on your hiking boots or put them on your winter boots and make a commitment to carefully get outside. Get some snowshoes, get some nice winter boots for yourself, get some um, cross-country skis. I mean, before they plow in Saratoga most days, I could go skiing for hours, you know? Uh, so. Um, so do, get making a commitment to yourself to do those things now, even if it's to go out and get on your porch and just breathe when it's not too cold out, just breathe. Having pets is another thing that helps to increase our diversity of our beneficial microbes, especially dogs. Wow. Um, so it's, the, they found, so the way that right now and there is also some argument about this but right now the generally accepted way that they measure um how healthy one's microbiome is is how diverse it is and they know that having pets increases diversity and then another thing that you can do is commit to having 30 or more plant-based varieties of foods in your diet every single week because the different foods that you eat feed the different beneficial microbes in your gut. And the more beneficial microbes you have, the least likely you are to have pathogenic microbe overgrowth. Okay. And so, I mean, I could go into the ins and outs of Chinese medicine and how to make your body a less habitable environment for pathogens for hours, because it's totally, the theory is totally built on doing that. And that's why knowing your constitution and knowing when it's going out of balance and knowing what to do to bring it back into balance mm -hmm. is important because your constitution is largely your microbial entities in, in and on your body. Um, but for the purposes of our talk today, I feel like knowing that if you have pets, if you get outside, and if you eat a diversity of foods, fresh whole foods, not processed foods, plant foods, not omitting grains if you don't have to, not omitting anything if you don't have to. Mm -hmm. And that's what's best for the environment in your body. And that environment needs to be strong and healthy so that it can best manage itself in the face of coming into contact with a pathogenic influence. Um, and everything we do, whether we worry, whether we sleep well, whether yeah. we exercise, that all has a direct influence on our micro microbiome. Changing time zones has an adverse effect. Not sleeping well has an adverse effect. Not eating well, not exercising, all of those things decrease diversity in the gut. So we want to make sure that as simple as it sounds, as simple as it sounds to take nice deep breaths, that is also going to change the diversity in the gut and it's going to change the way the brain and the gut talk to each other. Because the diaphragm, when you take nice deep breaths, massages your vagus nerve and that's a major roadway for the interaction between your brain and your gut. Between your brain telling your gut, your body is safe and between your 
gut telling your brain your body is safe. Mm -hmm. And it's the microbes in the gut that are stimulating the nervous system in one way or another as to, to that tell the brain whether you're safe or not. So if sometimes you get these weird anxiety feelings and you're not sure where it's coming from, it can sometimes be coming from that. Yeah. Um, and so the other thing I wanted to say is to, to do your best not to indulge in anything, to take the middle path, whether it's with um, following politics or eating chocolate, it doesn't matter what it is. Try not to overindulge in anything. And it's recommended to take vitamin D, vitamin C, and zinc. Okay. And then there are also Chinese herbal formulas. And if anyone's interested, there are specific ones for coronavirus that it's not like we're giving somebody a formula to kill the coronavirus. What the formulas in the herbs and the Chinese pharmacopoeia are doing are making the body a less habitable environment for the type of pathogen that the coronavirus is. And so the coronavirus is categorized as a very specific type of pathogen in Chinese medicine. And there are very specific types of foods and herbs that we want to feed a person so that they are a less habitable environment for that pathogen to thrive. Remember, the dosage of the pathogen can be an aspect of the equation that is what sends somebody into a more moderate infection than a, than a mild one. So we want to limit that ability of it to thrive if, if we are exposed to it. And, um, and they've, in China, you know, they've come through plague after plague after plague, and this is no different. They don't right. just wear masks over there because of the smog. That's definitely part of it. But they also have it embedded into their, you know, into their collective unconscious about these plagues. And this is how Chinese medicine has been able to respond so effectively, regardless what, of what critics on certain news sites or um, certain quote unquote authority figures think they may know about the way Chinese medicine works. Um, Chinese medicine has been able to respond very effectively to supporting the body in this pandemic. And there are doctors who've been taking formulas in the hospitals, treating people directly who haven't been um, affected or as affected by the coronavirus. And that's the one common denominator they can trace it to. So it may not be a double blind controlled study, but given my experience and my knowledge about the medicine, I have full faith in it. And, um, and in all of these recommendations that I've given you today, um, to be the best course of action in self-care in the midst of um, any pandemic, but particularly in the midst of this one and in the midst of any cold or flu season. Great, Bridget. And so it's like there's the, the, the main defense is avoiding right. through all the ways you talked about. And then the other defense we have <clears throat> is, you know, like, it looks to me like it's it's like basic, you know, getting outside um, our pets, like looking at what we can do with exercise and breathing and just, you know, like taking good care of ourselves. And I like how you even, this particularly hit me, like the, you know, are we worrying? Do we have a lot of anxiety? And then even eliminating those <laughs> you know, chances, because that I noticed that is what's cumulatively tiring mm -hmm. is when I'm questioning, oh, did I just get exposed? Did I forget to wash my hands? Mm -hmm. Did I, and that is just wears me down over a, the, a while of, the, you know, months of this, right? Mm -hmm. So that's something to, to look at. How can we mitigate stress? And maybe like meditation might be helpful Absolutely. Well, maybe. It, it is. And it decreases inflammation and everything, regular meditation and practice. So, I mean, it comes down a lot to consistency. Yeah. And yeah. then it's consistent behavior <laughs> from the good habit. Yeah. And I wondered, I don't, I know um, people are on the call if they have questions and you want to ask, because 
we were going to end at 11.15. It's 11.06. And so what, if you do, you could certainly, you could unmute yourself and ask, or you could put it in the chat if you had anything specific to ask, um, ask Bridget while she's here. So while people are getting ready with their questions, I'll add that um, I am leading a fall cleanse and it's a dietary reset to help diversify first to work on crowding out um, uh, negative, negative acting pathogens in the body and then defer, diversifying the microbiome in the gut. And then after that cleanse is over, I'm going to do a 21 day challenge in which we incorporate the wisdom of Ayurvedic medicine, Chinese medicine, Taoist and yogis, yogic practices and Western medicine and Western science to diversify our microbiomes and be healthier and more resilient and stronger for the upcoming, um, for the upcoming season. Right, so you, there are things you can do now that are going to help you, you know, in the winter and beyond, actually. Correct. And yeah. that, that's a concept in Eastern medicine, this idea of, of having a cleanse and beginning to, you know, it's just like support a healthy microbiome. That's what right? it's all about, really. Right. And, um, and that, that's really good, too. What date does your cleanse start, Bridget? It's going to start on October 6th. Okay, and people can go to your website or yes. and connect with you there if they want to do Bridget that. Com. I know, I oh, think okay. I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm excited about it. Yeah. It takes, I think for me to do something like that, I, it takes a lot of planning and getting my mindset, you know, about yeah. the date. Well, that's so. why I pushed the date back because of the whole school thing. Yeah. And it's a lot for everyone to get to get adapted to and then um not, then we'll have a little lull and then we'll do the cleanse and then we'll have the election <laughs> i know <laughs> it's we'll like have, <laughs> and then we'll have another like lull uh before january so um yeah we'll we'll uh we'll see take advantage of the lulls so that we can make ourselves more resilient for those other times right Wait. right that's the idea um, and I think that that, you know, helps me feel like, you know, less like a victim, like there are things that I can do, um, that would, would, you know, I'm just not a sitting duck here. There are things that we Right. Can and do. then when you're doing those things, you actually feel better. Like our body will adapt to what we do, especially if we do it with consistency, our bodies are going to adapt and it clears the mind when we're doing things well for ourselves and we feel it, right? right? And then you start to feel like your stress tolerance goes up. You start to feel like you're less reactive and um, you start to feel better. You feel like you have more vitality. You start sleeping better. You naturally are inclined to eat better and right. you just enjoy your life more, you, even though there's all this uncertainty and, and strife. Right. Right, right. And that's like, it, that creates a really supportive, healthy rhythm Absolutely. in life. And that um, tends to create more of that too. So that, that is great. And I don't see any questions, you guys. Um, I, had, I had one question. Okay. Anybody has one. But, you know, now that schools are opened, um, I mean, and my husband's an essential worker, you know, I mean, Ah, there is, I mean, I feel like just that alone gives me anxiety, <laughs> you know, just that they've opened schools. So, um, you know, can you, I mean, we do all the things you just said. Mm -hmm. That's what we do, mm -hmm. right? Right. Okay. That's it. That's the best that we can do. Yeah. And then you know that you, you know that you're in a good place. Constitutionally, oh, right? right? You okay. know you're in a good place constitutionally. And it doesn't mean to throw caution to the wind. What it, what it does do is it, is it fortifies your system and it, and it strengthens your mind. I see. Yeah. Okay. Right. And it, can, it changes, you know, the inflammatory response in the body and 
and our um, ability to transform fluids and not accumulate toxins. So we may not have control over our genetics, but taking optimal care of ourselves and utilizing the information we do know works to take care of what we do know we have control over is the best thing that we can do in any circumstance, right? So like life has always been uncertain. Life has always been life. We've just never been so directly exposed to the reality of it before on a daily in our face basis, in our faces, right? Basis, right? So it's like this whole thing is a, such a shock to us here. Meanwhile, you know, people have lived for millennia with, under the umbrella of uncertainty um, and thrived somehow. So mm -hmm. that's what we need to do now. Excellent. Mm. And then that comes, you know, the, the yoga teachings or the um, whatever um, about that. psychology, you know, resonates. So that now is a good time to put that into practice. It is. it is. And I also think that it's a good time. It is a good time, you know, to go inward. It's almost, you know, this winter is probably very conducive to retreats, Absolutely. That, like your own private retreat. And study and reflection and um it's like you can you can take those teachings that you, you you may have heard for many years and actually start applying them and that's a whole nother like ball of wax <laughs> you know <It> certainly is. <laughs> you know? So i'm so glad you're i'm so glad you're bringing that that up that um you know there are there are teachings to help us right now there are Excellent. We just have to, we have to just implement them and focus on them and have faith and trust in them and in ourselves. Really. And like living, living it, you know, mm -hmm. living the, the teachings. It's like, um, you know, I think that, um, you know, I feel like all of us have, have come, it's like been a journey since March of understanding and coming to a different place and digesting where we are. And, um, you know, so I felt like this was a good time to take, take in some new information, maybe new for people, but to, to start to, to plan, like you said, there's like a pause and then we're going to go, go through the, the fall, the winter, all the other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so no questions. You guys are so quiet. Not none, <laughs> none, not one. So funny. Let me see. Okay. Good. Well, anything else you want to leave us with, Bridget? Especially? If you're interested in the microbiome, the book is cultivating your microbiome it's a really easy read yeah. and actually some of it there's there's some funny stuff in there I, yeah there's a whole chapter on poop so uh, that's a fun one <laughs> it's, and, and, and digestion i mean that's where i am now i mean it's amazing like the am amount of time food is in your body that's what i was just reading. in some people's bodies <laughs> whoa 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 and if it's yeah. not very good quality food. I was like, whew. <laughs> like it's, it could optimally what, like 12 to 15, but it could be there 50 hours, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> like, holy That's cow. They did a while back in women, they found that, but I, I'm assuming those women were eating a lot of meat yeah. um, and things that slowed them down. But yeah, 50 hours. So those microbes in the gut are feeding on that same food for 50 hours right so it made me I, I like your book because there's like this whole world going on <laughs> in me and around me and in other people that i don't i didn't think about before yeah, yeah. how um you know how important that is to our health is really kind of at the forefront of science right now too Absolutely. And it that. will be for some time now. I mean, they want to use the microbiome to figure out 
best treatments for many different disorders. And, um, and they're still learning about the extent to which it, it, it affects us. What the, what the key players are even, we still don't know. Right. So it's right. And, um, um, and it's going to be coming out on September 26th, right? Um, no, the 22nd it comes oh, out. 22nd. Okay. So soon. And you can order it and you have them, you have them as well. I have some advanced copies. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I got one. Also next Tuesday, I'm going to be on the Dr. Pat show and that's a live show out of Seattle. Um, oh, great. At two o'clock Eastern time. And um, I think it's just drpatshow.com. If you look it up, you'll, you can't mistake it once you get on the site. And I'll have it on my website too, bridgetshea.com. Oh, but, okay, great. Yeah. All right, that sounds awesome. Seattle. Yeah. Are you going to be in Seattle? No, no, it's going to be remote. You're, I was not to missing, know. you're not missing much. Uh, it's pretty smoky here. Yeah, I figured. I'm so sorry. That's yeah. so hard. Yeah. I can't imagine, but hopefully that will shift soon. Um, they say Thursday might let up a little bit, but right now you can't go outside at all. I it's like that. thick. Yeah. Do you have a good air filter in your home? Uh, I probably should have. I should get one. one. Yeah. Yeah. We're just like not going out. Yeah. Of course. So. Yeah. It's hard. And, and we're just, you know, I'm just talking about how it, one of the best things we can do is get outside. Yeah. And of course, most of the people listening today are on the East Coast, but for people yeah. on the West Coast, that's really not an option. No, we've been uh, all summer, though, ever since COVID started, we've been outside fixing, doing the garden thing. Yeah, that's but, good. Uh, See, that's why we have to do the things that are best for us in the time that we can, because we don't know, yeah. you know, when things are going to shift and we're going to have to turn our focus elsewhere. Yeah. Right, that's a good point. Yeah. I know. I know. Well, Bridget, I am conscious of the time. So I want to just thank you so much for coming. Welcome. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Aisha, it's nice uh, to see you. <laughs> Catch up later. Yeah, okay. no, we will. Okay. Love you. Love you too. Okay. All awesome, right. Awesome, you guys. Bye, everybody. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks, bye. Bridget.